Cool. So I did also another interview with Ibs um, just uh, very recently. And uh, one of the things that I, it popped up in my mind with this music is that he's still a student. <laughs> and he's going to a lot of student parties. And <laughs> I was so jealous about that. And there's also a little story that we share. So I was on Twitter like a few months ago and I saw this like nice animation with, which is from um, a Code Sandbox. And I look at it and I was looking at, at CSS variables at the time and I thought, oh, this is perfect. I can do some refactor of the CSS. And then I send it back on Twitter and uh, it was him. <laughs> so yeah, live. So, okay, so Ips is here to talk us the story about Code Sandbox and also how they integrated Vue. So that's, that's a cool story to hear. Uh, welcome, okay. Ips. Thank you. So, hello everyone. I first like to say that it's really cool to be here and there are so many people here. And I have such a strange voice over the speakers. <laughs> but um, my name is Yves van Horne, and this is quite a hard name to pronounce. It's even hard to pronounce in the Netherlands. So you can also call me Yves, you can call me Ives, and for some reason, my friends call me Flip. <laughs> um, I'm a part-time software developer at an auction website called Katowiki, and I'm also still a computer science student at the University of Twente, which is in the Netherlands as well. You can find me on any social media under the name CompuEvis. Okay, so I'm going to talk about an editor called Code Sandbox. And first, I'd like to know who, have you, who of you have heard of Code Sandbox before? <laughs> that's cool. Okay, and who of you have used Code Sandbox? Oh, really? That's, that's much more than I expected. Okay, well, before I'm going to say what Code Sandbox is, I first want to tell you the story of Code Sandbox because it's, um, I think that's the most important part of um, the whole story. So about one and a half year ago, I was on a vacation to St. Ives. And you can probably guess why we went there. <laughs> it's a beautiful village in England. Um, and at that time, I was still working for Katowiki. And we were converting our Ruby on Rails 2 pages to React. I've seen some, some shit. It's, uh, it's insane. So, um, but while I was in St. Ives, I got a lot of questions from my coworkers about React specifically or about how to implement React with Ruby on Rails. And I didn't have my MacBook with me, so I didn't have any way to answer their questions. Um, so what I had to do is I had to get their code from Slack and had to run it through my EVIS interpreter in my head. And my EVIS interpreter is not that great. So I sent them back that there was nothing wrong with the code, while the browser certainly thought it was, it was wrong. So that's when I started thinking, what if I have my local development environment everywhere? And the follow-up question was, what if I um, put my local development environment on the web? So I got this idea, but like everyone, I just dismiss this idea, put it in my idea box where there are thousands of other ideas. And I started university. So I did a lot of student things. I started drinking beer. Um, I went to lectures, like this, sort of. And, um, but at some point, I started feeling a bit unproductive. I didn't really build anything anymore, and I did at Katowiki. Um, and this reached like a really low point when I also started getting Java lectures. When I started getting Java lectures, I was so done that I had to do something with my time. And during that Java lecture, I started a project called React Sandbox. And that sounds a bit strange, right? It isn't really React Sandbox now. Yeah, I'm glad that I changed the name. Um, so it's quite simple. This was just the design. You have this editor on the left. You have all the components on the left. We didn't have any file system. And you have the preview on the right. And I was pretty happy with the design. So the next Java lecture, I started implementing it. Um, and this is already a working version. If you started typing here, then you would see um, a live updating preview on the right. And I was so happy with this. Um, it's quite simple. What we do is we get this code on the left. We transpile it, which is um, making the code readable by the browser. 
And then we evaluated using the evil function called eval. And uh, everyone said me, to me, like the past few years, never use eval. And now I've uh, deployed a production application with eval in it. It's like bound around eval. <laughs> so you can probably guess what happened next. These Java lectures like never end. We have end endless Java lectures. So I was able to build whole code sandbox during all these Java lectures. <laughs> no, that's, um, that's a joke. I started getting enthusiastic, and I started building more features for it. So here you can see that we started getting tab support. We started getting this cool browser navigation bar on the top. And you could even import from tabs. At some point, I got like really enthusiastic about Code Sandbox, and I started working on it on my free time. And I added feature and feature. I got like these happiness shots um, for building every feature. And it was, I reached a certain point where I thought, OK, this could actually be useful for more people that are stuck on Synth Ives without their MacBook. And I started thinking, OK, maybe we can actually release this. And that's when um, I got my friend Bas Buursma to join in, and he started doing the design of it. And in April, we released Code Sandbox. OK, and this Code Sandbox is still like unknown, so I'm now just going to demo it, like show it. Is this big enough? Uh, for me, it is, but OK. So this is Code Sandbox. And like you, like you can expect, you have Code Editor on the left. You have a file system. You can import NPM dependencies. It's just like your local editor. But the new thing is, is that you have a preview on the right. And since like last week, you can even resize this preview and do crazy stuff with it. Um, and it works just like local. You can now. For example, change this, well, like, welcome to View Amsterdam, like a classic example. And there you have it. You have um, welcome to View Amsterdam. <laughs> um, so that's th this is what Code Sandbox is. And I want to talk about um, what Code Sandbox exactly is, what we do for View, and how we got View working. So when we released Code Sandbox in April, it became more and more popular. We started, apparently, there were many more people stuck on Synth Ives without their MacBook. Um, and as it grew in, grew in popularity, we also started getting more feature requests. And one of the biggest feature requests was view support. So I didn't really, I thought, I didn't really know view at the time. I hadn't used it. So I said to them, OK, it will probably be done next week. I can do this in the weekend, right? Those were my famous last words. Because if you have few support, you kind of imply that you also have SAS, LAS, Stylus, CSS modules, and TypeScript support. And we didn't have any of those. Our bundler was very primal. It was our primal bundler. Um, we, want, we have this um, idea that we want any few CLI project to work in Code Sandbox. So it was necessary to have these uh, transpilers in it. So the previous bundler was pretty simple. I had to rewrite the whole bundler for view support, by the way. It was uh, crazy. It, took me, it didn't take me a weekend. It took me like a month. Um, so before, it was pretty simple. We had JavaScript, just, to, just some text. We would transpile it first, and we'd get simpler text, I think. And then we, will, we would just call the evil eval again with the transpiled code. But we would. Change, we would add a function that's global, require function. And what it would do is it would just get the code of the path that's inserted and run this whole cycle again. Beautiful arrow. So it's, um, it's actually very simple. And we've worked with this for four months. And it worked like a really long time. So if you have ever have like a free day or a day off, I'd recommend to start building a bundler. And even better, Build it in Code Sandbox. Even better, better, um, share it with me so we can go to the bundler party where every bundler creator goes. <coughs> I still need to get invited. But there were some limitations with this, uh, with this old bundler. So everything needs to be synchronous. A require function is always synchronous. When you call it, you expect the module to be back immediately. But some transpilers are um, asynchronous. For example, SAS, LAS. Stylus, all those transpilers were asynchronous, so that didn't really work. 
Second problem is there is no paralleliza parallelization. <laughs> Funny word. Um, so, but for example, if you have um, a JavaScript file and a SAS file, then we normally, it would be better if we would transpile them at the same time using web workers, but we transpiled everything one after the other. It was not very efficient. The next problem was that there was no support for emitting modules. And this sounds pretty vague, but I think you've all worked with this concept before. Because a .view file is actually a .css file, a .javascript file, and another .javascript file. The first one for the template, the second one for the scripts. And we didn't support that. And I think that's pretty vital for view support. And we didn't have chained loaders. So with chained loaders, I mean that if you have a SAS file, then you need to transpile it to CSS and then to CSS modules. But we didn't have this whole flow. Now we have a pretty advanced bundler. I'm pretty proud of it. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, all bundling happens in the browser. So the only thing our server does is send the necessary file to the client. If I have time left at the end of the conference or at the end of this talk, I will show code sandbox like without internet connection. So I can prove my point. So how it now works is we have a more global view. We have all the files. And we then check which files are actually used by the application and transpile those with web workers. And after that, we do the evil eval again. I would, I would never lose the evil eval. And um, we use this on the transpiled code. And it's actually much faster than I expected. So that's really cool. And so we got Code Sandbox. And we have a cool homepage since Code Sandbox 2.0. And I want to show that homepage on this big screen, just to say that this homepage has been on a big screen. OK, and now <laughs> it's all green-like. <laughs> I've worked for a week on this animation. <laughs> The next thing I want to talk about with Code Sandbox is the values that we have. Um, when we release Code Sandbox, we set three values to follow with every feature we make. Those are lower the learning curve, encourage sharing and discovery, and give a local editor experience trademark. So I first want to talk about lowering the learning curve. Let's imagine you're this guy, and that guy has just built a single file application, which means it sounds very cool, but it's just an index.html with view. And this guy wants to move over to an application that's bundled and transpiled. And so he started doing research. He started looking into the terminal, into the code editor, into NPM. But he didn't really build anything in the meantime. So this could be quite discouraging. And maybe he found other questions, like, what are build tools? Do I need transpilation? Do I need tests? And these tools are really nice. And Vue CLI has made it a lot easier. But for some cases, it's like you first need to learn all these concepts before you see the beautiful um, sun above the clouds again. And with Code Sandbox, we try to make this simpler. The idea is, is if you're a beginner that you can just go to codesandbox.io slash s slash view and start editing the text. And you immediately get this gratification of, oh, I've actually edited, edited an application. I can call myself a web developer now. So that's um, one of the things that we try to do. With the quote, installing tooling should not stand in the way of getting started. And with Code Sandbox, we have much more we can do much more, because we have control over all the files. We have control over the uh, code editor. And we have control over the, over the preview. So we, can, we have like full control over the whole environment, so we can make it easier for beginners. And I want to show a demo of that. Um, so I've built this counter. And what I notice is that I tell that I say interesting a lot during my conference calls, uh, conference uh, talks. And also cool, I say cool a lot. So I want to count it. Now, this counter doesn't work yet. The first thing that ha is in this, um, in this application is that there is these squiggly lines. And what we did is we, oh, it's not readable now. So 
what we did is we um, read, we like listened to all the warnings that Vue throws, and we show them in the file where the warnings are. And we also show this here. Per file, you can see which warnings are there for, from Vue, and this way it may be easier to notice them. And the warning is that I have a typo, so that's easy to fix. And I can also press save here, but I'm not sure if I have a Wi-Fi connection. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a Wi-Fi connection. That's a shame. Mm. So Code Sandbox does work offline, <laughs> but we don't support saving offline. I can maybe connect to my, oh, maybe it works. Oh, I need to sign in again. Two seconds. Maybe I can start giving a Java lecture now to make you all build code sandboxes. Hmm. That's pretty strange. I think I'm going to use my um, network from my phone, if that works. Oh, okay, that's strange. Okay, so I can save now, I think, if I do this. Yeah, okay. So this doesn't work really let yet. I need to implement the function. So I can do this.counter is this.counter plus one. But I am a post-millennial, so I should probably use a library for this. Now, and this is a perfect example of reusing like the full context. We detect that there's not a library here, and we detect that it's also not defined in the package.json. So we can show a suggested solution, at lodash as dependency. And when I click that, we add it as dependency, and it works. So now I can do this. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah, it works. Oh, yo, I'm never going to save again. Um, another thing that we try to do is, like, interfaceifies everything. And, yeah, this red line is because I invented this word. It still needs to come and go into the dictionary. Um, what we mean with this is that we try to, um, we try to, every configuration that we support, we try to create a UI for it. For example, the Prettier RC, we create a UI to show that, um, to, uh, to, uh, like set the settings of this file, and it gets converted into code. That's another thing we do. We do support more config files, and you can use a UI instead. Another cool, another cool example is like for dependencies. You can search for dependencies here. You can then select the version you want to install, and it will install it. Uh, where is my slides? Oh, there it is. The second thing, how, how much time do I have left? I forgot to... Uh, Track my time again. Okay. Okay, so the next thing is we encourage sharing and discovery. And sharing is pretty obvious. You can just share the URL you have with someone else. They can start forking it and editing it and continue with the um, whole flow. But discovery is more interesting. Because if you look at Code Sandbox, we have 180,000 sandboxes on here. So this is like a gold mine of information. If you ever need help with a library, you can just filter on Vue, and then you can filter on, for example, oh, I want to know how Vueify works in combination with Firebase. And then you get all examples by peop from people that made a sandbox with Vueify and uh, Firebase. So you can look at that for examples. Another thing that we do is we try to make it very easy to, um, to like, Embed your sandbox, so you can embed any sandbox that you've made in, um, as an iframe or in a Medium article, and people can even edit the sandbox during in the iframe. For example, I can change like this, and it will update automatically. We also try to make it easy to import. So, for example, we have import from GitHub. If you go to this URL and then 
paste your GitHub URL after it, you will get a sandbox that stays synced with your um, GitHub, GitHub repository. So if you make a commit, the sandbox will change automatically. And we even support committing from SID, from Code Sandbox, so you can also commit to GitHub from Code Sandbox. You never need to leave your browser again. You can also import with the CLI. If you install Code Sandbox and do code sandbox.slash, we will just deploy everything to Code Sandbox that's in that folder. And you can use our API. We have like an uh, API, define API, and if you call it with files, we will create a sandbox with the, uh, yeah, we will just create a sandbox. And this is especially useful for documentation. Maybe some of you have seen it, but we are also used on the view documentation to show single file components. The last thing that I want to talk about is local editor experience, and I can get very enthusiastic about local editor experience because we have worked with, on this for the past two months, um, adding features and features and features. And in the end, we want to make it possible to develop Code Sandbox in Code Sandbox. We want to go full meta. So I want to show you, first tell you that we are using the Monaco editor in Code Sandbox, and that is an extracted version of the VS Code editor, but it works in the browser. And it's by the um, Microsoft team, and I'm like a huge fan of them because they made everything so much easier in my life. Another thing that we have is, I find this word hard to pronounce, feature, 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 but we have, expo, um, we have it in Monaco as well. And it's, it's built by uh, Peng. He's on the VS Code team. It's really cool. Maybe I can give a small demo. For example, um, if you go here, then you can see that we like, have so many different. And we also have type information. View dot, and then you can see all the different types. Um, and since recently, we got support for, uh, we got Code Sandbox 2.5. And this update has many different features, specifically for Vue. One of the biggest features that I like with this update is uh, proper hot module reloading. We now support the Webpack API of hot module reloading, so if I would click increment a lot of times, and I would say, oh no, I have not, um, I need to do this times 10 because I don't want to click that much. Then you can see that the state doesn't reset when I update the component, and I can also change like this to bold. And then, woo. We also have uh, prettier. When you click prettified, it will make it, yeah, my code is always prettified, sorry. And uh, it will make it prettier. And we have ESLint support, but we don't have the ESLint plugin view uh, yet. Like, if I do this, then you see there, there's a warning. What's the time? Okay. Now I want to give a quick, quick demo. <laughs> I promise it will be very quick, which is I'm going to do something pretty crazy. I'm going to export this sandbox to GitHub, then I'm going to make a commit, and then I'm going to deploy a production version of this sandbox with few CLI from Code Sandbox. So no, no terminal attached. Okay, let's first create the sandbox. And I hope this internet allows it. Like few example Amsterdam, create repository. I've worked like a long time on this animation as well. <laughs> but you see it for a long time, so it makes sense. OK, now you get the sandbox that's synced with your GitHub repository. And if you open this, you can see that this is the sandbox, um, but with few CLI in GitHub. So it will work immediately as you clone it. And if you click Download, you will also, by the way, get the sandbox with few CLI around it. Next thing, next order of business. I'm going to make a commit. So I'm going to make this like a red color. I'm going to save it. Please, connection. Yeah, it's saved. OK, now it's red. I forked twi twice. Great job. It will now fetch the changes. It will check with the GitHub repository if there are any changes. It will see that this component has changed. I can do a commit message like uh, change color. Beautiful animation again. Mm. Oh, it worked. Yeah, I'm, I'm really afraid that this internet connection is some. And you can see that we now have a commit with just this change on GitHub.
Okay, the last thing, and then I'm then I'm then I'm done. Is going. I'm going to deploy this sandbox to uh, with Tide now. I'm not sure if you've heard of Tide, but the profile picture of Sebastian and me are both taken at Tide Day. So, <laughs> um, if I click deploy now, hmm, I've se seen this animation before. <laughs> I like reusing stuff. So it's now deploying the sandbox. It's sending all files to uh, now, and it will. Oh, it will um, do this. Um, this can take a short. Well, it can take one minute to install all node modules because it's installing few CLI. I can demo something else quickly. We also have um, Jest support. Like this is a Jest test, and um, you can see that it sees the tests. I can change this, and it will probably throw. Yeah, that um, and. Then it says, like, oh, we've expected this value, this value. I just did a test before the talk, but I was too afraid to, um, to demo it. But it also works with a few test utils. OK, and now you have this is the deployed version of um, the sandbox that I've just shown. So, Oh, we also show the error here, by the way. And you can also, if you just don't want to deploy, you can just take this URL and go to and open it externally, and it will show. Although the connection, okay, well, that's not a that's not a big problem. Okay, um, I think I don't have a lot of time yet left, so I'm just going to quickly continue demo. No, <laughs> so Code Sandbox is completely open source, and we have 50 contributors now. And I want to thank the contributors, and I also want to encourage you to also contribute. So if you go to compute slash code sandbox client, you see, you'll see your full repository. Um, I also want to thank Bas Buursma. Yeah, you can come now. <laughs> He's, um, we've built this together. Uh, he does the design, and we both do the thinking, and I do the coding. And uh, now I need to give you a hand. <laughs> <laughs> So, Bas Buursma. And I want to thank you for listening to my talk and uh, watching me talk. You can, if you have any questions, I'll just walk around here and you can throw anything at me. Um, and you can also, yeah, message me any questions to my Twitter account. Okay, thank you very much.